the weekly code quiz. What input type would you use to collect a person's first and last name? Input type text for a single line text input. How would you indicate to a user that you need their first or last name? The label element is used to indicate to a user what type of information that you are seeking. How do we bind a label element to the input element for the user's name? The for attribute for a label element connects that label to a particular input element if it matches the input element's ID attribute. Why use the ID attribute of the input element? ID attributes are used for something that is unique. So each input needs a unique ID so that a particular label can be bound to it. What else do label elements do? A screen reader will read the label element when the user focuses on the input element. So the label element also helps with accessibility for forms. When used with radio and checkbox, input elements, what else does a label element do? Users that have difficulty clicking in a small region will be assisted by a label element because they can toggle checkboxes and radio buttons by clicking on the text. This is also used for accessibility. What attribute is used with input elements for JavaScript actions so that the data collected by the input can be passed to the correct collection method. The name attribute. So how would we use the form, input, and label elements together to create a form that collects a user's first and last name based on what we have learned so far? Form opening tag action attribute equals left blank. Label opening tag for attribute equals first name in quotation mark. Please enter your first name colon. Label closing tag. Input opening tag type attribute equals text. ID attribute equals first name. Name attribute equals first name. Break break. Label opening tag for attribute equals last name. Please enter your last name colon, label, closing tag. Input opening tag, type attribute equals text, ID attribute equals last name, name attribute equals last name, break, break. Input opening tag, type attribute equals submit, value equals submit, form, closing tag. So in this example, we see the form, label, and input elements working together. Each input is for a single line of text. One is uniquely named with an ID attribute of first name, while the second is uniquely named with the ID attribute of last name. So in order to connect a label element to a particular input element, the for attribute for the label is the same value as the ID attribute. So the first label, the value of the for attribute is first name, and the label itself reads, please enter your first name. And this is bound to the first input element. While the second label element has a for attribute with the value of last name, and the text that reads, please enter your last name, and it is bound to the input element with an ID attribute of last name. And finally, we have a different input type, submit, that is used to submit this information. And that has a value of submit, which means that the button itself will have submit as the text. And all of these are within our form element. The action attribute is left blank because that goes a little bit beyond HTML and CSS, where we have to basically send this information to some sort of collection method or database. And in order for that information to be tagged appropriately, you have to make sure each input has a name attribute 
that is also unique. So in this case, our first input for first name has a name attribute that is also first name, while the second input type has a name attribute of last name. And in this way, and in this way, all these elements work together to make a form that requests the user's first and last name and submits that information to a database. Presented by Designers Learn Code.